we'll now calculate a real integral using contour integration. The integral that I want to calculate is integral from 0 to infinity logarithm of x divided by x squared plus a squared dx. And I will assume that the constant a is real and it is also positive. We have to choose a contour for a complex function. So we have to choose the complex function and the contour because this is just this is a real function. And we want to evaluate this integral by using contour integration. I will choose the following contour. So I will have the imaginary axis here. Then we have to first draw the points where I can have some discontinuities. And we have to take a look at this integrand here. What are the points that constitute a problem for the integrand? Well, x equal to zero is a big problem. It is a big problem because the logarithm it is, is not defined at x equal to zero. Also in complex analysis, so this remains a problem also in, uh, in complex calculus. And of course here, uh, here's a discontinuity, but this is a very peculiar, a very particular discontinuity that we have to avoid when we choose the contour. So our contour cannot really contain this point here because this is very problematic, very troublesome. So this integral here that they have uh, written down is implicitly assumed to start from zero plus. So it's not really starting at zero, it's starting at zero plus. So it's implicitly assumed that we have to take the principal value of this integral here. Okay, I'm not going to write it, but that's the, the assumption. We have to be very careful with the point x equal to zero when we have a logarithm. Then there are other points, other discontinuities, when the denominator is equal to zero. So when x is equal to is equal to i a and also x equal to minus i a. So this comes from, from the solution to the equation x squared plus a squared equal to zero, right? The solution to this equation is x equal to plus i a or x equal to minus i a. So let's draw the point x equal to i a here on the imaginary axis. So this is i a. And we will not need the point minus i a and I will show you why. I will show you why because I will choose the following contour. So we, if we want to calculate that integral right there from zero to infinity, I will show you that the right contour to choose is the following. So I can start from some value here, which I can call capital R, and uh, which is, um, of course, minus capital R if you want, uh, when R is, is um, positive. So I'm assuming that I'm considering a circumference like this, whose radius is equal to capital R, okay? And we will assume that this is circumference goes to, I mean, the radius of this circumference will go to infinity. Then uh, starting from x equal to minus r, we will move on the x-axis until we reach this point very close to the, to the origin, but it cannot, con it cannot pass through the origin because the origin is a very big problem, as I said. Therefore, I will choose another very small circumference in this case. It's a very small circumference which does not pass through the, the origin and the circumference as a radius equal to uh, lowercase r. And then we will move again along the x-axis and we will reach the point x equal to capital R here. This is x equal to r and this is x equal to minus r, where lowercase r will go to zero and also capital R will go to infinity. This is the, the contour that we will choose. Okay, so this is implicitly assumed and I'm not, I'm not going to write it. As you can see inside this contour, we have just one discontinuity. So we will have to use the residue theorem. Okay, and I will choose, I, I, will, um, I will call this, uh, this uh, curve here, I will call it gamma one, and then I will call this gamma two, and then I will call this gamma three, but I also have gamma four. And let me define capital gamma 
as the union between gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, and gamma 4. Okay? As you can see, I have, let's say, avoided the discontinuity x equal to 0 because that's a very big, a very big problem, as I told you. Now, if I choose the following function, logarithm of z, in this case z is a complex number, okay, which can vary on the contour, and then I have z squared here in the denominator plus a squared, and I integrate it over dz, but I'm choosing to integrate over the closed contour capital gamma. I know that according to the residue theorem, since I'm, I'm going uh, around this this is a path here in an anti-clockwise manner, I will have 2 pi i, so the result of this integral will be equal to 2 pi i times the residue of the function logarithm of z divided by z squared plus a squared evaluated at z equal to i a, like this. Right? So this is not very, very complicated to carry out. The residue of that function at z equal to i a, well, according to the formulas that we have derived during the course, the logarithm of z divided by z squared plus a squared must be multiplied by z minus i a to cancel, let's say, to eliminate the discontinuity. And then we have to evaluate this at z equal to i a. So this is exactly the, the, the residue. So this quantity here can be calculated like this. And this gives logarithm of z divided by z plus i a. And then I have to calculate this at z equal to i a, right? This is equal to logarithm of i a. So I can also rewrite it like this. a times e, sorry, a times uh, i, but i can be written as e to the i pi over 2 divided by z is equal to i a, so it's twice a times i. Okay? And now we can also rewrite it as logarithm of a plus i pi over 2 divided by 2a i like this, okay, and and if you if you want you can also multiply the numerator and the denominator by by i, so you can rewrite it as I can I can multiply by minus i, let's say, so I will have the real part is pi over four a. Well, that's because I have i here and i here, and they will cancel. Okay, then I have minus i logarithm of a divided by 2a. So I can rewrite the residue like this. It has a real part and an imaginary part. And of course, when I, when I consider the result of the integral, I also have to multiply by 2 pi i. Okay, so the integral over a gamma logarithm of z divided by z squared plus a squared dz is equal to, I have 2 pi i times minus i logarithm of a divided by 2a, that's just pi logarithm of a divided by a, right? And then I have plus i pi squared divided by 2a. So the integral can be written like this, okay? But this is the, the, the result of the complex integral. We would like to, to be able to solve for this integral here. We'd like to find this result, the result of that integral. How to do that? Well, we know that the integral over the closed curve gamma can be written as a sum of the integrals over gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, and gamma 4. So the integral over gamma 1 can be written like this. So it's an integral over the real axis. In particular, we will start from 0 plus and we, we will go all the way up to infinity when, when 
lowercase r goes to zero and um, uppercase r goes to infinity. So in particular, we could, we could rewrite it as integral from r to capital R, like this, if you want. And then here we are on the, since we are on the real axis, this can be written as logarithm of x divided by x squared plus a squared dx. And then we have plus integral over gamma gamma 2, which we, we will have to carry out, uh, logarithm of z divided by z squared plus a squared dz plus integral over gamma 3. Take a look at gamma 3. Gamma 3, we are still on the x-axis, but we are we are on the negative part of the real axis. So we will start from minus capital R, and then we will go all the way up to minus lowercase r. And then we have the logarithm of x. Okay, x is negative in this case. So uh, let me rewrite it like this. Since x is negative, I can rewrite it as the magnitude of x, or the absolute value of x, times e to the i pi. This is the phase of an, um, a negative number. Okay, e to the i pi. Divided by, divided by, we have just x squared plus a squared dx. Okay, and then we have an integral over gamma 4, which is another circumference, logarithm of z divided by z squared plus a squared dz. And the sum of these integrals is still equal to this quantity here. We have to remember that, okay? Now, let's calculate integral over gamma 2 and integral over gamma 4. Then we will proceed with gamma 3. But um, I, I want to do this first because integral over gamma 2 and integral over gamma 4, we, we will see that these integrals are going to give us a zero contribution. And uh, let's start with, uh, with gamma 2. We have to show that the integral over gamma 2 gives zero. I will show you, I will show you like this. I, I will show it to you uh, in this way. We will consider the magnitude of the integral. Remember that the integral is a complex uh, quantity in general because it contains uh, complex numbers. So it gives us a, a complex value. And I can take the magnitude of that. So it will give us a real value. And I will uh, parameterize the circumference gamma uh, over gamma 2 like this. Z will be equal to capital R e to the i theta. Okay, and theta will uh, go from 0 to pi here. So I will integrate from 0 to pi. I have the logarithm of R e to the i theta divided by r squared e to the i 2 theta plus a squared r i e to the i theta d theta. And now I, I'm, I want to use a, a very simple property of integrals, in particular the absolute value of an integral over some, some interval here, uh, which can go from, let's say, a to b of a function f of x dx. Well, it is pretty um, obvious that this integral should be less than or equal to the integral from a to b of the absolute value of f of x dx. This is a, a, a property that is usually introduced in um, single variable calculus. But it, it, it is also pretty intuitive because in this case we are summing only positive quantities. And um, here we are summing quantities that can be negative and positive. And then we take the, the magnitude of that, right? So this integral is going to give us a, a greater result, a larger result. So I can use the following, the, the same property here. This is less than or equal to the integral from zero to pi. And then we can take the magnitudes here. So I will take the magnitude of the logarithm of r e to the i theta, which I can write as logarithm of r plus i theta, because the logarithm of e to the i theta is i theta. And then I have r. The magnitude of i e to the i theta is just 1. It's easy to compute. And then in the denominator here, I have the, the magnitude of this quantity, which can be written like this. So I can, I can rewrite it as r squared cosine 2 theta plus a squared 
squared plus r squared sine of 2 theta squared. This is squared. And then I have to take the square root of this. Okay, d theta. Now, uh, the magnitude of this quantity here is just the square root of logarithm of r squared plus theta squared. And I have to let r go to infinity. Okay, so if I let r go to infinity, this integral will, uh, will give us something like this. So it will, will be, uh, it will behave like this. So it will behave as an integral from 0 to pi of the logarithm of r times r divided by, well, here we have r squared in the, in the denominator, right? Because if r is very, very large, in the denominator here inside the square root, we have r to the power 4. Because we have r to the power 4 cosine squared 2 theta plus r to the power 4 sine squared of 2 theta. And then, of course, a, square, a to the power 4 is negligible and the other terms that depend on a are negligible because a squared is much smaller than r squared cosine of 2 theta. Okay? And, and therefore, this is what, what we get. This is the behavior of uh, our function. So, yes, it's true that when theta goes from 0 to pi, the cosine of 2 of two theta can also be uh, 0. It can, can also be very small. So it's cosine of, for example, when theta is equal to pi over 4, this will give us 0 uh, there, right? And then we still have uh, the sine of 2 theta here, which is very large. So a squared is still very negligible with respect to r squared. Okay? In, in general, you can write something like this. And when r goes to infinity, well, we can also, we can also, for example, cancel these two factors if you want, and then we have, you have logarithm of r divided by r, but r is much larger than the logarithm of r when r goes to infinity, so this will go to zero as r go to infinity, right? This is how we can prove that the logarithm, sorry, the integral over gamma 2 is, uh, is zero when R, capital R goes to infinity. Now let's calculate the integral over gamma 4. And let, let, let's show something. So we have to show something similar. In this case, we have to integrate. If we parameterize similarly our semi-circumference, in this case, we will use this parameterization. So we have small r e to the i theta. And theta goes from pi to 0, if you take a look at it. Theta goes from pi to zero because we are moving like this on the circumference. So we start we start here at theta equal to pi, and then we go all the way down here when we where we have theta equal to zero. So the integral starts at pi, if you want to be rigorous, and and then here you put you will put zero. And inside this, uh, this integral, so the integrand of, uh, that you have here will be exactly the same integrand that you have up here, but you replace capital R by small r. So you have logarithm of r e to the i theta, lowercase r, i e to the i theta, divided by r squared e to the i 2 theta plus a squared d theta. Okay. And well, remember that in this case, r goes to zero. So this will be a in the vicinity of zero, in the neighborhood of the point x equal, uh, sorry, r uh, equal to zero. It will be something like this. You have logarithm of r e to the i theta. Then you have r i e to the i theta. In the denominator here, you have something like a squared because a squared will be, will be much larger than r squared in that case because we know that a, a is greater than zero, okay? And r goes to zero, then integrate over d theta. But now this is pretty pretty uh, simple to calculate because we know that when we have 
a function like this, we have a function like this, a logarithm of some constant, which does not depend on r, I will put it, I will, I will call it c, which can also be a complex number, okay? And then we have r times r, and we have to calculate the limit as r goes to zero. Um, here we have, okay, th when this goes to zero, the, the magnitude of, of uh, the logarithm of cr uh, is going to give us infinity here. So since we are uh, we are considering c to I mean c can also be a, a complex number, so uh, we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, simply put a plus or minus sign here because the the number in the complex plane can um, can have uh, in general a real part and an imaginary part. So for example, I can write it like this: the logarithm of c times r is equal to the logarithm of the magnitude of c, which is positive, times r, e to the i, let's call it phi, where phi is the phase of the the, the number c. So we, I can rewrite it this, like, it, like this, logarithm um, uh, magnitude of c, r, plus i phi, something like this, okay? And when r goes to, uh, to zero, this will go to minus infinity, okay? So the real part, of this quantity here will go to minus minus infinity, but we also have an imaginary part. Okay, so uh, for example, let, let's say that this is i phi, okay, and we know that we know that uh, when uh, r goes to infinity, the number will be somewhere here, so uh, we are moving like this, very far away from the origin like this, as r increases, okay? Therefore, this is how you you can visually see this, uh, this quantity, but the magnitude of this vector here is still going to give us infinity, okay? So we have something that goes to infinity times something that goes to zero. You can calculate that easily by using uh, the, for example, the, the, the L'Hopital's rule, okay, where you, you, rewrite, you rewrite it like this. You have the logarithm of C times R divided by one over R. R goes to zero. And then this quantity here will go to infinity. This quantity here will go to infinity. You can calculate it using the L'Hopital. So, here I put, will put an H to the note that we are going to use the L'Hopital's rule, the L'Hopital's rule, limit as R goes to zero, and then you take the derivative of the, the numerator and the denominator, you will have one over C R times C, which comes from the derivative of the logarithm of C R, divided by minus one over R squared. Okay, and this will give us minus R, and then you have to take the limit as R goes to zero, and this gives us zero. Okay, so this is how you can see that this integral here over gamma 4 will still give us zero. Okay, now let's let's do integral over gamma 3. That's the, the last integral that we have to calculate over this uh, portion of the path. Okay, that's gamma 3. So the integral over gamma 3 can be written like this. We have an integral from, from minus r, r goes to infinity, so I can also write it as minus infinity here, to minus small r, r goes to zero. So here we have a, mi a zero minus in this case. And then we have the logarithm, remember, here I had written something like this, the, lo the logarithm of the magnitude of x e to the i pi, okay, because x was negative, so this quantity here was x, but it is negative, so I can also rewrite it like that, because the phase of a negative, qu a negative quantity, a negative real quantity, so when we talk about negative and positive, of course, we are talking about real quantities, because a complex number is not positive, it is not, uh, it is, it is not, 
negative nor positive. It is just a complex number which can have a, a positive or negative real part or imaginary part. But okay, let, let's uh, move on. Here we have a squared plus x squared dx. Okay, and then I will make a substitution here. So I will change the variable x from x to t to minus t. Sorry. So when I change that, I will have the logarithm of the magnitude of t, which is just so the magnitude of, uh, since x is negative, we know that x is negative. So the absolute value of, uh, of x is equal to the absolute value of minus t, which is equal to the absolute value of t. And you can just put t here because t is positive if x is negative, right? And then here we have plus i pi, if you want. And then divided by a squared plus x squared, um, x squared becomes t squared dx becomes minus dt and when x is equal to minus infinity t is equal to plus infinity and when x is equal to zero minus t will be zero plus right and i can also rewrite it like this so i have integral from zero plus to infinity so the, the zero plus stands for the the principal value here. So this is exactly equal to integral from zero to infinity with this symbol before the integral principal value. But I'm just taking it for granted, so I will cancel this. I'm taking for granted that I want all I want is the principal value of the integral. And then here I will have the logarithm of t divided by a squared plus t squared dt plus here I have i i pi I have changed the I mean, I'm using this minus sign here to change the the limits of integration so I have i pi over a integral from 0 to infinity the differential of I will write I will rewrite it like this t divided by a divided by 1 plus t over a squared. If you take a look at it, I, I mean, I have simply rewritten the imaginary part of that integral right there. I have factored out a squared here, and then uh, one of the two factors a, because here I had a squared, I have put it inside this, this differential here. This is useful because now I can also perform this integral if I want to. This integral will give me the arc tangent, which I will call a tangent, okay, which is the arc tangent or the inverse tangent of t over a, and I have to evaluate it between zero and infinity, which is going to give me pi over two. Okay, so what I will get from this is so the integral over gamma 3 will give me, I'm, I'm rewriting it here, okay, so this equal sign here is this equal sign here. Therefore, I have integral from 0 to infinity of the logarithm of t, but I can also call it x instead of t, divided by a squared plus x squared dx. Then I have plus i pi squared over 2a. And now we have to put our results together. Okay, so we have the integral over gamma 1, which was integral from 0 to infinity, logarithm of x. Remember that this 0 here is a 0 plus, if you want. Logarithm of x divided by x squared plus a squared dx plus. Then we have uh, the only non-zero result is given by this quantity here. The integral over gamma 3 because the integral over gamma 2 is 0 the integral over gamma 4 is 0 therefore we get we have to sum this to that therefore here we get a factor of 2 and then we have plus i pi squared over 2a and this is equal to the residue at the, that we calculated at the very beginning of this lecture multiplied by 2 pi i we have already calculated that and that was equal to pi 
logarithm of a divided by a plus i pi squared divided by 2a. As you can see, the imaginary part that we have on the left on the le on the left hand side, we cancel the, uh, the imaginary part on the right hand side, and that's good, right? Because this integral here should be real, and therefore the the imaginary part should cancel. And what we get is the following. So we get that the integral from zero to infinity of the logarithm of x divided by x squared plus a squared dx is equal to pi logarithm of a divided by 2a. And this is the result that we wanted.